Welcome to another mini video from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you my workflow in creating a design like this using basic shapes, text, the corner tool and clipping masks to create a miniature storefront image for the challenge in the Affinity Designer hands-on Facebook group. Instead of creating a hand-drawn sketch, I put some shapes down to give me a rough idea of where I want to go with this design. I put them in its own layer called Sketch. I use assets I created earlier to get the right proportions. Assets are a great way to speed up your workflow. I want to do this from scratch, so I start with a rectangle. Duplicate it, scale it, and put it in its new layer, which I forgot to start with. I like to duplicate elements on the screen as much as possible. I duplicate the rectangle to make the roof, using the corner tool to adjust the sides. Using duplicates makes it easy to block out the main shapes of the building. At this stage I won't worry too much about the detail. I just tried to get a rough idea of what the building will look like. That said, I'm getting lost in detail. The clock is just one of those fun little things to play with and it's easy to achieve with the right tools. I use the cog tool, set the T's to 12 for the hours. I can adjust the inner hole and the inner radius and quickly have the face of the clock. A duplicate set to 60 teeth gives me the minutes. Using the node tool I adjust the inner hole and the inner radius. Three circles and two cogs make a simple clock face in no time. I continue blocking out the shapes, again trying to duplicate as much as possible, staying with rectangles and circles. I changed the design of these elements a little bit to look more like the hands of a clock. I need to convert one of the rectangles into a curve and modify it with the node tool. In order to keep these shapes editable, I make it a compound, setting the inner circle to subtract. I use the contour tool for the door frame to make sure it's evenly spaced before converting it into a curve and adjusting the lengths. I do the same thing with the window using a duplicate, scale it down with the contour tool. I adjust the rectangle for the signage, give it a different corner, enlarge it slightly and add my text. It's nothing overly creative, I just call it Clockworks. When choosing my font, I try to avoid common fonts like Ariel, Helvetica or Times New Roman and choose something that matches the design. In this case, something that is solid, no fuss. I add a frame with the contour tool and place the sign on the layer above I created for the decoration elements. I go back to the main building, duplicate the walls and give them a shadow shape. I copy the transparency and color settings from one using the copy and then a paste style to use the same style on the duplicate of the wall below. It copies the fill, stroke, layer opacity and layer blend mode. I shade the window with a gradient and add some texture to give it the shininess of glass by adding some semi-transparent rectangles. To clip them, you can drag them in the layer panel or cut them and paste them inside with Ctrl, Alt and V. I shade the frame using a duplicate, scale it down with the contour tool, set it to a stroke rather than a fill and give it a transparent gradient. I like that window so I place it 
in my assets by simply dragging it over into the asset panel. I duplicate the window and make some small changes to the rectangles inside the clipping mask to have it look a little different. I adjust the door to match, copying the style from the shading of the window to the shading of the door. Take one of the windows and move it inside the door. Adjust the rectangles to look different from the window next to it. And use a boolean subtract to cut out the center part. I create a rectangle placed on top of the window shape. Select the rectangle and the window and use the boolean subtract to cut the rectangle from the window shape. The nice part is it does not alter the content inside the clipping mask. More rectangles act as highlight shapes under the windows. They give the window frames a bit more depth. Next up are the columns. I give them a shadow shape, then I place behind them, alter the color, combine the lines and use the corner tool on all of them to round the top and bottom. I add a base to the column by duplicating the main shapes. I add a highlight to the base and adjust the highlight of the main area you won't have a highlight and a shadow in the same place. So I shorten that one and round it off. I group all the elements of the column, duplicate and mirror them to the other side of the door. I add some basic texture rounded rectangles that I more or less randomly place on the wall. I select all of those and place them inside the rectangle I do the same thing with the wall behind the two side windows. Place the windows inside there as well so they are below the shadow. I add more shading shapes using rectangles and circles as much as I can. A stroke with a gradient does the trick. These are compound shapes, so I can't use them as clipping masks. I have to place the shadow shape on top and adjust it with the node tool to match. Alternatively, I could use a compound as a mask to below. I adjust the wall behind the clock, give it the same color and a shadow shape, again copying the style and pasting it to the shadow shape. I don't like the roof color, so let's change that. One of the big advantages of working with vectors is it's that easy to change colors or the main layout. I don't like the rectangles and the triangles the way they are. So I add a shape behind the clock face, adjust that, give it a shadow, copy the style and place it inside the wall. I also copy one of the bricks from the wall below and place it inside this clipping mask and duplicate it a few times. I shade the roof and don't like the idea of adding more to the top, but it could do with an indent, so I duplicate the triangle at the top. Set it to multiply, duplicate it again and combine it as a subtraction compound. I duplicate that shape, adjust it, set it to wide and change the layer blend mode to add. I duplicate the roof element below, scale it down for the highlight and the shadow shape. I do the same thing for the roof below. Altering the layer blend modes is an easy way to achieve nicer color mixes. Rather than have the white as normal, I set it to overlay. At this stage, I forgot the premises of working with rectangles and simple shapes. I used the pen tool for a simple line. I could have done it with a rectangle as well. Place those inside the roof as a pattern. To make the signage stand out a little bit more, I take out the O's, setting them to transparent and replace them with shapes. Looking at the whole design, there are a few things that need to be fixed. The layering of those tiles and the roof are not right. I had duplicate there that should not be there. That looks better. 
And now I realize that one of the common mistakes I make is I don't save. Don't do what I do. Save the project from the start. Give it a name, even if it's a blank canvas. It makes it easier in case of a crash to find your file. I adjust the shading of the clock and add the hands next using rectangles with altered corners adjust those with the node tool after converting them to curves and combine the lot as a compound holding alt while clicking on the boolean add setting the circle to subtract to be cut out that way i can add to the compound or edit the elements inside I duplicate the compound and can easily edit it for the other hand. I turn the snapping back on to align the two hands to the center of the clock face, set the origin to the center of the clock face as well, that way it's easy to rotate them. I duplicate the minute hand and make it the seconds. I move the three hands inside the clip group and below the center circle, duplicate that one and give it another color, that way my clock is done it's time to add more decoration the clock shape is a great and very versatile tool sometimes you want to add to it so i take this cog add a circle and a pattern of circles inside i group these decor elements set them to erase group them with the cog so the erase is just limited to the cog take the other one add rectangles and two circles to that one combine that into a compound i can add to it and adjust it easily I want to add some more decoration. Rectangles make the base of the street light I'm planning to put next to the building. I stack up a bunch of shapes, align them, center them, and then modify the corners. The top is wider, so I convert the center shape to a curve so I can modify it with the node tool. Duplicates with the contour made smaller, make the highlights. I duplicate shapes, color them darker for the shadows and place them in the object below. Like most other shapes, the circle has some nice tricks up its sleeve. You can turn it into a pie or a donut or you can combine both pie and donut and still have a very adjustable circle. I group one side and duplicate it, mirror it, place it on the other side and have my street light. I group all the elements and drag them into the asset panel and just like I drag elements in, I can drag elements out. I take the blackbird, place it in the scene Duplicate it, reposition it, and modify the duplicate. Lastly, I add some cogs inside the windows, set them to a lower opacity and just a gray color. And that's the clockworks. Done with basic shapes, text, the corner tool, and clip masks. 
Using simple shapes does not mean you get simple results. It's just an easy and fast approach to get to the design that you want to achieve. Think of it as an infinite box of Legos. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like and click on the notification icon and I will see you again soon.